Hey man, he brought Ben Block. Come back at y'all, man, with another edition, man. But it's Boomer's Logic standing out here in the backyard, man. Nice, beautiful evening with my dog. Uh, just getting in, enjoying this nice weather, man. It's, it's cooling down a little bit in the evenings and in the mornings. Uh, but I want to address something that I read on this post yesterday. My sister posted something. And I wanted to talk about it. But really not address that, but address something else. But it led me to going ahead and finally speaking on this particular thing. It just constantly it, it, it irritates my soul. And I decided, you know what? I told my wife last night, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and address this. Because people need to actually understand, but they, even though they won't. But before we do, man, you know what it is, Boomer's Logic. I mean, we just ha I have just haven't been coming out with a lot of videos, been doing a lot of things. Uh, but I'm taking the opportunity to do this right now. Uh, if you like the content, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, thumbs up, comment, all that type of stuff. But anyway, without further ado, let me read what she said. So this is uh, my sister. And she said, I was sitting here thinking. I have family members and friends who lost children, and they are devastated and trying to cope with their loss. I hear them recite that the Bible tells a story of a man who loses everything, even his children. The story says Jesus let Satan test this man's loyalty to God. I scratch my head and I think, as I watch loved ones suffer in anguish, what type of sick test is that? That's just horrible. That is sadistic and cruel and mean. I want to take everything from you to see that you love me. Is that not weird? Is that not arrogant? What kind of game? I'm sorry. As I watch the hurt of others, it frustrates me to hear people say that's a test of faith. Okay, last night when I, well, uh, I started reading that and I had stopped. And then my wife came and said, did you read this? So she read it to me. When she read it to me, I, it, that this type of thing just frustrates me and infuriates me. So when I heard it, the first thing I looked at, I said, hold on. Did she just say that Jesus let uh, uh, let Satan test God's, uh, Job's loyalty to God? Because this is who she's talking about. So once I thought about it throughout the day, I said, you know what? A person who is that ignorant, complete, has total, complete and total, to the point where she took Jesus and put him in the Job story. Look. If you're ignorant of the ways of God, I mean, you don't even take the opportunity to sit down and try to attempt to read the text, to read about him, to kind of get familiar with him in his ways before you come out and say ignorant stuff like this. You took Jesus and put him in the Job story. So with that, I said, you know what? That doesn't even warrant me even addressing what she's talking about because until she gets some type of familiarity with him, you know what I'm saying, in his ways, then we can have a conversation. You don't have any type of familiarity with it. So in that blissful ignorance, because it is blissful, just go ahead and keep being mad about people saying that their faith is being tested through their trial, which you'll never understand. You just truly don't want to understand. But I do want to address something that I hear commonly said. And it goes back to her because I've heard her say it before. If there, if there is a God, all-loving God, why doesn't he, why is there uh, death, disease, you know, people being raped, murdered, and killed, and all these particular types of things? And I've heard this. Um, if there really is truly a God, why does he just stand idly by and allow these things to happen? First, if you believe in the creation story, Adam and Eve, the whole thing, right? From the very beginning, humanity had free will. So we ought to ultimately have free will. He doesn't intervene in regard to our decision making. See, humanity is the way it is because of the decisions that humans make. You make your own decisions and consequences follow. So in your free will state, all everything has become corrupted. So if you believe that concept from Adam and Eve, when they decided to go contrary to what Yahweh told them to do, they started this whole cycle into motion. Because of their decision making, it ushered in death, sin, uh, disease, corruption, it entered, it, it, this, this is where all of this ushered into, if you believe that story. Um, so with that, free will has been passed on generation to generation. Now, 
let me say this, because I, I explained it to my wife like this last night. See, here, here's the problem with human, humanity. You want God to intervene and clean everything up, but you have to understand if he comes in on one level and deals with the things that you all don't like, you have to deal with him completely and totally. He's not just going to come down, swoop down, clean up all your mess that you made, and you don't have to have consequences to your actions. If he does that, your free will is gone. He becomes sovereign over you, and everything he says, you have to do. So at that point, all your homosexuals, obliterated. All you adulterers, obliterated. All you young girls running around here like whores, obliterated. He's not playing no games with you. So here's what you ought to do. My suggestion to you. Ignore him. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep questioning his sovereignty and his decision making and what he does and doesn't do and when he will and won't intervene. Because once again, you have free will. But if you want him to come in on one level, he comes in completely and totally. And you got to follow the rules. So if you want world peace, you want hunger to stop you and all this, yeah, he'll come and do it. But guess what? He coming with rules. And you ain't gonna like them rules because most of y'all who ask these questions are liberals. Y'all feel like y'all should be able to do anything you want to do anyway. So it don't work that way. He's sovereign. He does things the way he wants to do it. His mind is not your mind. His thoughts are not your thoughts. So with that, with that big question about why don't he intervene? Because he gave you free will. It's you all who make a mess of it. And then you turn to him and say, why you don't clean this up? Once again, I'll tell you, he will come and clean it up. He promised that he will. But if you want him to come back and clean it up, go ahead and ask him. All of y'all just start asking him. And when he comes, he's going to say, okay, I'm going to clean it up. Because here's what y'all ain't going to do. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You ain't going to do this. Shit, and you ain't going to like that. So once again, just ignore him. Keep living your life. Just ignore him. Uh, keep basking in your immorality. And just let him be him. Leave him alone. He'll be back. And when he comes back, he's promised. When he comes back, he's not coming back loving and hugging. He's coming with the sword. So, sis, you can ask that same stupid question when he gets here. And he's going to knock the whole top of your head off. It's going to fly like a frisbee. But these are stupid questions. And this is why I don't entertain these things. Because y'all don't even take a moment to try to get a basic comprehension of the creator of all things. But then you want to question why he doesn't do certain things and, and why he does certain things and why he allows certain things to happen. It's because you all do it. He don't do nothing. He's just sitting up there watching, saying, I keep telling them what to do, but they want to, you come and clean it up. Once again, he'll come and clean it up for you. But half of you going to die in the midst of his cleaning up because you think just because you're not the one who's creating the hunger, you're not the one who is, um, the molesters are killing the kids or doing this and that. That's your squeaky clean. No, no. All that stuff you got in that closet is going to come clean. So just leave them alone. Anyway, man, I digress. Love y'all, man. See y'all on the next one.